Hey everybody, it's Charlie at Charlie Slybox. And uh, one of the questions, one of the many questions we get in the shop every day um, is how to tie knots. And uh, I realize as a beginner that can be a fairly daunting question. There's lots of different knots out there if you go around on the internet. Um, but realistically for trout fishing, there's you know four or five knots that you can get away with. All, you know, everything you're gonna do trout fishing wise, you can get away with four or five knots and really probably two or three of them. Um, the first of which um, that I've used for years and years and use 85% of the time, um, is a standard clinch knot. So uh, to tie a standard clinch knot, what you'll do is you'll take your tippet and thread it through the hook eye. And then what I like to do is pinch just in front of the hook eye um, so that I've got the tag end doubled back along the standing line. Then I'm gonna grab that tag end and I'm gonna wrap it around the standing line. You can see I'll use my middle finger to sort of hold it in place as I go around. Um, now I'm using fairly heavy tippet here, so I only went three or four times around. Um, on standard trout size stuff, 4x, 5x kind of thing, maybe five or six times. But then I'm going to take the tag end here, back down through this loop at the bottom. And then I'll grab that tag and kind of just fold that knot up. You can see how that tag will start to coil around the standing line and starts to set the knot up to be tightened. Now a good thing to do on any of your knots is to wet them. So I just usually touch my tongue to it and then pull on the standing line and cinch that knot down tight. You can come in and cut that tag off. Um, if you're fishing a big fly, you don't have to, if you've got a short tag, it's not a big deal. You can leave it on there. Um, this size fly with, with clear tippet, uh, the, the length of that tag that I had left there, um, honestly, I half the time probably wouldn't even have trimmed it off. Um, they don't care about the long end. They won't care about that short end either. Um, so that's a standard clinch knot. Now you'll also hear about an improved clinch knot, um, which is not a knot that I use much, but people ask about it and you know, it's for sure somebody's favorite knot out there, so I'll show you how to tie it too. Um, and it really starts off the same way. I'm going to thread the tippet through, pinch just in front of the hook eye, and you can see I kind of keep my fingertip in there. That just keeps that loop in front of the hook eye a little bit bigger. And I'll go around three or four times, and I'm going to take the tag back through that loop, and then fold it back up on itself and come through the loop I just made. Let me get my fingers out of the way here. You can see where that tag came back through. And I'll start to cinch that down. And same move here, I'm gonna wet that down and then pull that knot down tight, like so. Um, and again, trim that tag off, like so. So that's an improved clinch knot. Um, I like the standard clinch knot. I find an improved clinch can cut itself. Um, I've just never had much confidence in the improved clinch, but some people like it. So for those of the, you that do like it or that your grandpa liked it and that's the knot you wanna tie, there it is. Um, so that's the two knots to tie um, a standard trout fly on. Um, there's another knot that you can also tie, a, especially uh, nymph or streamer. Um, let me get another piece of line here, called a no-slip monoloop. And we did a short little Instagram video of this not too long ago. Um, but the, the no-slip monoloop, what that will do is gives us a little loop connection at the eye of the hook. Um, and what it allows your fly to do is sink, pivot in the water and sink straight down so it plummets faster. Um, it also gives the fly a lot more movement in the water. And I like that on streamers, um, any variety of beadhead nymphs, um, but also on hoppers and stoneflies, uh, large adult patterns, you know, fl floating foam flies. Um, and what, that, what it does on the dry flies is it lets those flies kind of get influenced by the current a little bit more. Um, so to tie a no-slip mono loop, what I'll do is take my tippet beforehand and tie an overhand knot. Um, and I pull it down fairly tight, um, not all the way cinched down. I still want some space in there, but I'll pull it down fairly tight. And then I'll thread through my hook eye. And I'll pull the knot right down to the hook eye. And I'm going to take the tag in back through that overhand knot. And one of the important things is that you come back into the knot the same way the tag came out. Um, so this came out the near side in my case. It came out the near side. It's going to go right back in the near side. Then I'll pull that whole rig right down close to the hook eye and pinch it. And then I'll wrap around three to five turns, depending on how heavy the tippet is. And I'll take that tag end back through that overhand knot. And again, I want to go in, in the same way that it came out. So in, in this case, now these, these are on the, on the far side. So I'm going to come in that side and I'll pull that tag end down, wet that down just a bit. And typically I'll tighten this down with a pair of forceps. I like to leave that short tag so I usually use my forceps or my teeth, depending on how long the tag is, and cinch that knot down tight. And what that gives us, let me trim our tag off here. What that gives us is a nice short little loop that'll allow that fly to pivot and move a lot more than a rigid knot like a, like a clinch. Um, not a bad idea, not a, a bad thing to kind of get to know. 
Um, incidentally, I should mention that sitting on the side of the river while fish are rising in front of you and trying to learn to tie a knot is not the place to do it. Um, we've all been there and you know how frustrating that can be because you're trying to do it in a hurry and maybe not with the best light or uh, um, maybe the wind's blowing or, or maybe you're hungry or maybe you had a bad day. Um, any variety of excuses you could use, but really the place to learn knots is sitting on your couch at home. Um, tie those knots until you can do them without thinking about them. Um, my vision is no good these days, and I can still tie all these knots almost blind um, just because I've tied so many of them. So it's really just a matter of practice, um, and really the place to practice is at home when you're not sitting with fish in front of you. Um, so that's our no-slip mono loop. So I'll clip that one off, and we'll kind of get to the next, next category. And these are uh, tippet to leader knots, or if you wanted to add some tippet to your leader. Um, and there's a variety of ways to do that as well. Um, the first of which, let's see how much we've got here. Uh, the first of which would be a double surgeon's knot. So if I took, let's call this orange piece the, the end of my leader, and this white piece my tippet, um, to tie these together, what I want to do is I want to overlap these two pieces um, a long enough length that I've got an easy working length. Um, don't try to do it with such a short length that it's that you have to kind of struggle to get everything through. Give yourself, you know, four or five inches of, of overlap. Um, so I've got the orange coming from my left and the white coming from my right, and I just lay them in on top of each other. And I'm going to pull those taut, and I'll pull them apart like this. Then I'm going to fold that loop toward me and tie an overhand knot. So I'm going to pull the short end of the leader and the long end of the tippet through. So I've just tied an overhand knot. I'll tighten that down just a bit. So just an overhand knot, short end of the, of the leader, long end of the tippet. And I'm going to do that one more time. So that's a double surgeon's knot right there. Um, if you wanted to tie a triple surgeon's knot, which is a good knot if you're try tying uh, a very heavy piece of leader to of, of your leader end to a finer piece of tippet, maybe 3x to 5x, um, an extra turn through there where you just go through one more time um, makes a triple surgeon's knot, which is a good knot when you're trying to uh, attach two varying uh, diameters of tippet. Um, if you're kind of within reason, um, just a single uh, or a double surgeon's knot will work just fine for that. Um, so to tighten this down, what I want to do is grab all four ends and just kind of tease the slack down all at the same rate and tighten that down good and tight. That would have been a good idea to wet that ahead of time, but I didn't think of it. Um, but a pretty clean little knot. Um, and you can see, let me get this up here, my orange tag end is not very long, If but if it was longer, I could tie a dropper onto this. Um, a lot of Euro rigs are kind of based off of that, um, where you'll cut off the upstream tag here, although some guys do tie droppers to that. Um, but on this sh this downstream tag that's going down toward the tippet end, um, you could tie a fly on here, you could tie another surgeon's knot down here and leave another tag, um, and that'll kind of hang those out away from the leader. But otherwise, just come in and trim those tag ends out. And you've got a pretty clean little connection. You can see there's a little bit of a corner there from a surgeon's knot. Surgeon's knot doesn't lay quite as straight. Um, this is a, a knot that I do, um, you know, I'll admit I use in cold weather if I... Uh, uh, I'm in kind of a hurry. This is a quick, easy knot to tie. Um, but my, my preferred method of tying leader to tippet is a blood knot, which I'll show you next. Um, so let me just clip these off, and I'll show you my method for tying a blood knot. Um, I was shown this knot when I was about 10 years old by a guy on the frying pan. Um, and I remember I went back and sat at a picnic table at Little Maud Campground and tied a thousand blood knots, and I've got this knot down since then. Um, and I've tied a lot more of them since those days and uh, have a, a pretty unique method of doing it. And um, realistically, everybody's got to kind of figure out their own way of doing it. So um, I'll show you what I do. You got to kind of figure out the way that you do it. And I say that about tying flies all the time. I can, I can show you how I do it, but you got to figure out how you do it. Um, so what I do for a blood knot is I'm going to take my two, my leader and my tippet and cross them over like so. And what I do is I hold the tag end of the tippet in my teeth. And then I can pivot the tag end of the leader around four or five times. And I'll pull the tag end back through the crotch. And you can see I can pinch that in my fingertips. Now what I've got here is this tag end that's sticking out long here. Um, I've always found it hard to try to twist this around <clears throat> from this side. Um, so what I do is I grab the standing line and I just pivot my hands and twist that around. And then I can catch this between my fingers and go back the opposite direction of the first tag. And if you kind of just pull on that a little bit, you can see how that'll start to seat down. And you can see the tags come out of opposite sides of the knot. Um, I've got a little bigger loop on my, 
on my white end here, just to tighten that down a bit. Wet that down, just give it a nice smooth e even tug, and you've got a perfect little blood knot. That's a very clean knot. It's a really good looking knot. It's a, a knot that makes you feel like you, you did something when you did it right, but that's a very clean connection. Um, it's a great uh, split shot stop also. You can put your split shot right above that in a nymphing rig and it won't slide down, conveniently placed. Um, and really, if you sit down and practice it, it's a fairly easy knot to tie. Um, you've got to figure out your way of doing it. Don't forget, you got teeth, you got extra fingers, and you don't have to do everything with your fingers. You can move your hands, too. Um, and that's just something that I kind of picked up over the years. That's just how I do it. Um, I don't know that I developed that all at one time. That's just kind of how it came to be after tying a bunch of them. Um, so there's, so far, we've got the uh, clinch knot, the improved clinch knot, the no-slip mono loop, the double surgeons, or the triple surgeons, if you want to do that one, and then the blood knot. And then finally, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, a perfection loop. Let's do this end. Um, so for a perfection loop, this is what you would use to tie a loop in the end of your leader uh, to attach to a loop in your fly line. Now most, most leaders these days come with a loop already in them, um, but let's say you cut it off somewhere along the way or you just want to tie a loop in, in something. This is how you would go about doing it. This is a nice smooth, clean little loop knot. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a loop with my butt end of my leader and I'm gonna pull it down fairly short. I'm gonna take and come around my thumb and pinch this in my fingers and make a second loop. So I've got a loop over my thumb and one sticking up between my fingertips. Then I'm gonna take this tag in back between the two and you can see I'm just pinching that down in my fingertips and I'll reach through the first loop and grab the second loop and pull up. Now typically I'll take a pair of forceps and put that in the loop to pull that knot up tight. And we've got a super clean, very smooth little loop. Um, now this is not the strongest knot in the world by any stretch, um, but it's typically up in the butt section of your leader where your tippet is going to be the weak length further down. Um, so it's, while it's not the strongest knot, it's a little consequence back down on the terminal end of your leader. Um, but that is how you would tie a perfection loop. And that's one that takes a little bit of practice um, and one to kind of good to see in person. Um, when you watch somebody tie this, and we're gonna to try to give you the best views that we can doing this, but when you watch somebody tie any of these knots, uh, kind of looking over their shoulder is a great way to do it, just to kind of see it from your own perspective. Um, and then finally, um, if, if your fly line doesn't have a loop in the end of it, and you wanna tie a nail knot, which is a great connection for a fly line, fly line to leader, um, I'll show you how to tie a nail knot as well. Um, so what we've got here is a tie fast nail knot tool. Um, these are very handy little tools. They, everybody should have one in their vest, uh, vest or pack. I say vest. Nobody's had a vest in years. I'm sure somebody out there has a vest. You don't need to tell me about it. Um, just keep that to yourself. It would be our little secret. You could just keep that there. Um, but what you want to do is take the butt end of your leader, um, and you can, I'm actually going to show you a couple different ways, but let's say this is the butt end of a leader. I'm going to take the butt end of the leader and run it down through this notch and put my thumb on top of it. And I want to leave myself enough tag end sticking out the end. And I'm going to take this tag end, and I'm going to wrap it around the tool, wrapping back toward my thumb. About five turns, and then I can hold that in place with my index finger. I'm then going to take the tag end and come from the back out the front under those wraps. So we've got the tag end here, and I'll pull that down under the tool and hold it in place. And I'll take the end of my fly line with no loop and tuck that in. Now what I like to do here is grab the tag end of the of the leader in a pair of forceps. And what I like to do here is just pop this off. Um, don't pull it slowly off, pop it right off so it slides off the end of the tool. And what you've got is a pretty well-formed knot, but it's usually got a few little loose wraps in it. You can use your fingernails to kind of line those up. And before you tighten it down, you can even slide it right down to the end of the fly line so you're not cutting off much fly line when you tighten the knot. Line those wraps up. And then I usually wrap it around the tip of the forceps just so it doesn't get cut and pull on both ends, pop your forceps off, cut your tag ends out, and you've got a super clean connection that goes through the guides really easily. Now an alternative to do that that really works well for butt sections, and this is the same nail knot, but tied more like a snell knot, and it requires a pin or a needle. Um, now, I have a hat pin that is stuck in the, the foam patch on my pack um, that I use just for this. Um, and the way this is going to work is I'm going to take the end of the fly line 
and lay it alongside this needle. Then I'm going to take my butt section, and the reason this doesn't work well for with a leader is because it's tapered. But on a, a constant diameter butt section, just a heavy piece of, of mono, I'm going to lay this in with the tag end coming out the pointy end of the needle. Then I'm going to make a big loop, like so. I'm going to pinch this all together in my fingers. I'm going to pick up the standing end of the, of the loop, and I'm going to wrap it back over the needle and the fly line four or five turns that I could put my finger against it and pull this tag end out the front. Now again, I like to use forceps here. Usually the tags are too short to pull with your fingers. Um, I oftentimes will do this with my teeth if it's long enough to get in there. Uh, as you just saw during the blood knot, it's hard for me to talk while I'm doing it with my teeth, so I'm gonna do it with the forceps. You can see you can kind of clean this up. This works really well if you're doing really heavy material. Uh, particularly in saltwater applications, but you can kind of tighten this knot down before you even pull it off the needle, then pinch the knot, pull the needle out, and you've got your knot pretty much preformed, and then tighten it down, and you've got a really clean knot that sinks down into the coating of the fly line and doesn't really stand up so it won't hang up in your tip top uh, when you're landing a fish. So that's kind of the, I don't know, four or five, I think five knots is what we just did. Um, four or five basic knots to kind of get you out trout fishing. Um, of course, there are a lot more. Everybody's going to come in and say, hey, the Davy knot's my favorite knot. Um, or, hey, the whatever knot is my favorite knot. And that's awesome. Um, you should watch their videos because they'll tell you all about their favorite knot. Um, those are my favorite knots. Those are the knots that I've used for, I don't know, going on 48 years, something like that. Um, they work just fine. Um, you can make it as complicated as you want. That's one of the cool things about fly fishing. That's what's so compelling is no matter how much you know, there's always something more to know. Um, the more knots you know, it's just fun. Um, like I say, sit down at home, uh, get a spool of that cider tippet, especially to practice with. That actually works really nicely for practicing knots. Um, get a spool of cider tippet and sit down and tie some knots. Learn to tie them. Um, you can sit and, and do them, you know, just to show off a little bit. Um, if you do them enough, you don't really even have to look at them to tie the knots. Um, I just did this as a parlor trick, and this blood knot I've tied so many times, I could do it without my glasses, um, which is saying something, because I can't do anything without my glasses. i got to get this where I can see it now, though. See, I said I was going to show off. Like so. So even without my glasses, I can still tie a blood knot. Um, that's just from practice. Um, I can't tell if that blood knot's tied very well. I didn't feel there it tightened down. Um, yeah, pretty good. I should probably take a look. Let's see. Oh, it's beautiful, just like I expected. Um, at any rate, practice, practice, practice. That's how you get good at knots. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that's helpful. If you have questions, um, I don't know, ask Max, because I just told you everything I know about him. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.